by the mid to late 60s, rock, rock isn't even rock and roll anymore, right? We simply call it rock. It's lost some of its fun. It's lost some, some of its role, if you will. Psychedelic rock is kind of that trippy. And, and so Bubblegum comes along, just kind of offset that and say, hey, let's put some fun back into music. We, for our you know, uh, industry and career, we can tap into a lot of this, right? A lot of this music is fun, happy, you know, uh, build me up buttercup type sing-along, mid-tempo. One of my favorite stories from this era is the TV show, The Monkees. I would definitely classify them as bubblegum rock. Uh, if you don't know the history of it, The Monkees were cr- a created band. They basically, they created this TV show, this fictional band called The Monkees. They had a casting call. They brought in Two of the players were actually musicians beforehand, but two of the monkeys were, they were simply actors. They had no musical background whatsoever. They start this show, and so they know with this TV show they're going to need some hit songs. So they hire a gentleman by the name of Don Kirshner, who I'm sure everybody knows now, but he was fairly unknown back then. And they say, Don, we need you to find the songs, to find the, the hits that this band is going to record and put out and, and hopefully become hits. How did he do? Don Kirshner. Incredible. In his first year, Last Train to Clarksville, I'm a Believer, and Daydream Believer all go to number one. They were all songs that Don Kirshner found, brought them to the band, had the band do them, and they go to number one. So in the, in the beginning, and it was incredible publicity because a song like that gets played on the radio, which reminds people to watch the TV show. They watch the TV show, and then they want to go buy the record. So it was really smart synergy and smart promotion. But the problem is, year or two into the television show, the band wants to tour. And the band says to the television show, we want to go out on tour. Don Kirshner was vehemently opposed to that. He said, no, you're not even a band. We made you up. We created you in the laboratory. You know? But the television show is going to, uh, they're going to get revenues from the band touring because they basically own the band. So they say, yeah, let's send them out on tour. The band, their egos start blowing up. Specifically Mike Nesmith, who was one of those two musicians. And Mike started saying, I want to write my own music. It came to a head one day, literally in a hotel room with the producers of the television show, Don Kirshner, and the band. And from what I've heard in multiple places, Mike Nesmith literally puts his fist through a wall and then says to Don Kirshner, next time, that's you. Okay? Who's the television show going to side with? The band, of course, right? You, you can't fire the whole band. You gotta, you gotta, so Don Kirshner leaves the band, okay? The next song that the Monkees put out was that song that Mike Nesmith had written and he now produced, and it's called Listen to the Band. Anybody ever hear it? No, guarantee you didn't, okay? It didn't even crack the top 40. They were putting out number ones the year before, and it didn't even crack the top 40. What was the song that Don Kirshner wanted the Monkees to record? Sugar, Sugar. After, after Don Kirshner loses his job with the Monkees, he gets a similar job with the Archies. Now, he's smart this time. He says, I'm not going to work with actors and actresses. I'm going to work with cartoons. 